What the fuck, Whiskey? What the... Why? Hey, everybody! Why? How's everybody doing? I didn't sign up for this. This what? is not I what I... I thought, I thought yeah, I, th I, I put this in the contract, so it's your fault for not signing up for it. I didn't even know we had a contract. Fuck. Yeah, well, you should read the fine print. Specifically says... Specifically it. says, it specifically Wendell. says I get all the money and your girlfriend. <laughs> And your girlfriend. Very, yeah. very uh, Savage. thorough. I like it. Mr. Steal Your Girl. It was in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Girl. It's my middle name. Hey, How are you chats, guys doing? Papa Kush, thank you for thank you for those little, little gray triangles that the you're throwing our way. Itty bitty titties. That's what we call them. Frostmire I Am. Hey, thanks for the Frostmire. subscription, Frostmire I Am. That's yeah, dude. We, appreciate we that guy. Appreciate I hate that guy. Can we ban him? Mm-hmm. Can we, Can we ban? ban him? He's so annoying. I'm all about chat. that. He's always life. trolling. He's always trolling his own chat. You mother. Ah, uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> you fucking. You <laughs> absolute wrong. troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. Uh, but so, yeah, hello, guys. Welcome to the Black Rots. Welcome to That's the, the Rotting Blackness. <laughs> it's the game. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> give a brief overview, and then we'll get into everybody's weeks. So I'll just give a brief description of everything that's been happening thus far. Yeah. Um, I'm going to so interject at some they, point. But... Our, our beautiful men have arrived at the town. Um, they, they had a great time where they had a lovely experience um, talking to everybody who seems really upbeat and really happy. And yeah. nothing changed at all since when they were last there. Um, and then they journeyed out into the wilderness with their new perfectly happy best friend Bertram. Uh, <laughs> who's, nothing... who's definitely sober. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing went wrong at all. No. And then they got into a fight with a little puppy and helped him out a little bit. It's not. But the puppy was not a very happy puppy. And Ref got his uh, his 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 chest slash arm. I died. Uh, yeah, that. Um, yeah, that. After the after the confrontation, they began hearing giant uh, giant heavy footsteps uh, approaching the scene, and Bertram. Um, distracted the thing, leading it away, shouting at it, trying to lead it away from his friends as they hid. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. So, Sounds about right. Yeah. So ref's, ref's been, dead. Uh, I'm gonna go. Be let's let's start with Tripper because he's been dead for a week. Hey, I been? have the most eventful news. No, that's that's false. Um, I have done nothing with my life, and I am. Uh, <laughs> I am a fantastic example of what it is to be a <laughs> millennial. So uh, I do nothing and add nothing to society. How about that? That's I good. sell bagels, ladies and gentlemen. God, that was the most self-deprecating thing I've done in years. I'm, I'm just like in the chat right now. Ref's <laughs> life gave him the Kensington. <laughs> and and the then, Kensington uh, slip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Came and then uh, this, do this, this dollar is for Slagmire. Thank you, Papa Kush. <laughs> yes. Appreciate it. Oh yes, dude. No, um, yeah, I, I've been like doing all sorts of role play shit, like just playing games and like wallowing in my own taxes. Taxes. Don't do taxes if you don't have to, yeah, guys. Yeah, they're terrible. I mean, I don't have to, but I'd be losing money if I didn't do them. So I'm doing them. <sighs> Fuck yeah. Taxes. Well, my big thing with taxes now is that um, it's really annoying. I have to figure out how of my tips I have to include in my taxes because <laughs> if I don't include enough, if I'm spending too much money on stuff, I'm going to get audited, right? Because they're going to be like, where the fuck are you getting this money? I have a, I'm in a similar predicament, uh, except I don't, nice. I don't keep track of my tips at all, but uh, go figure. <sighs> That's definitely a similar predicament. Uh, yeah, and then they use this footage against you as evidence. No, the IRS isn't insane. that thorough. I mean, what the the <laughs> the backbone of this country country's financial infrastructure thoroughness? What's that? Fuck off. All right. Any any tips Frosty for have, doing Frosty my taxes? It's my first time. I get somebody that knows how to do them. That's what I would say, Papa Kush. And what's up, Mock Up? Um, my, week, my week was interesting. On the weekend, uh, sorry, on my last shift, which was on uh, fucking uh, Saturday, I, um, I was supposed to close. And then one of my, one of my coworkers uh, was like, yeah, I'm going to vomit. So I 
I mean, I wasn't supposed to close. He was supposed to close. Hmm. So he was like, I'm, I'm feeling sick. So my boss ended up keeping me on. And then I kid you not, a party of 50 people came <gasps> in <gasps> and sat at this one section. And, and normally it's okay when you get big parties because big parties are like, yeah, hey, we'll let, you know, we'll like one bill or whatever and then people will just pay they all wanted separate bills oh. so, I, so i had to like i had to like take their order and then be like what's your fucking name and then go in and like punch a bar tab in and then keep track of these people that were running around throughout the restaurant like dancing and doing other things so we have like a dance floor and stuff too <laughs> and um i was stressed out that somebody was going to leave without paying me but i ended up doing this thing because i'm like i'm good buddies with our bouncers where i was like do not let anybody out unless they have a receipt that says paid in my handwriting. Nice. So I got a good system because several people tried to leave without paying, but they couldn't. So it was good. It was good. I ended up not having to owe any money because what ends up happening if somebody walks out of a restaurant is I have to pay for it oh, if it's fuck. my table. Yeah. So if somebody walked out with like a $100 tab, I lost all my money that night. Jesus. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but so that was good. That was the last uh, four hours of my shift on Saturday was me dealing with 50 people. And that was good. And I remembered everybody's name, think, so I'm think, happy that I have a good memory. I think one of my housemates is uh, trying to um, insert parts of their body into the router, so I'm going to try and switch to the Wait. data on my phone. Uh, what? Hotspot, so what I'm the sorry. fuck? I'm sorry, what? I'm fucking that's, with, but my, but my that's pretty. That's really pretty hot, hot, dude. That's, that's not a common problem. Happen. Not a common yeah, problem. yeah, yeah. Mall cop. It was pretty shit, Mother but at the same God. time, like it was good money, right? Because I got decent tips. Because people always end up liking me, so um, the tips are always good if I get a lot of people. Is is uh, Frosty a barmaid or a stripper? I am a I am a I am a server, so neither. But I wish I was a stripper because I feel like I would make decent money, make way more money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I would just have to like show people the the hair around my asshole, but you know that's for them <laughs> to enjoy, not exactly. me. So I I just came back into the conversation of hair around my asshole. I missed everything else. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Honestly, okay. yeah, he's right. Not not yeah. context doesn't yeah. matter in this case. Yeah. But um, besides that, uh, I started getting into D and D world building again, so that's that's good because I've Real only the, the the only uh, stuff that I've been ever working on in terms of like role play for the past like how long, like five months, months has just been yeah. has just been all, all flesh. flesh. So I'm gonna try my hand at running D and D again because I've only run one D and D like actual campaign. And it was glorious, just so <laughs> I can say it before you say anything else. Oh, one one hundred percent, mall cop. Like if I was to strip, I would do it for dudes. One hundred percent, I'd make so much more money. Yeah, because like the because it's not there's not a huge market for like the male stripper for females unless it's like bachelorette parties, right? And that's sort of like you'd have to travel and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Jonathan, have you got anything going on in your life? Anything interesting happened this week? Life is good. Uh, making it through college, like I don't really have a lot uh, going on, but just trying to enjoy the time I got. That's about it. Nice. Uh, just as a reminder for everybody, I won't be here next week. It'll be a whiskey-free day, so I don't know. It's a one-shot uh, we'll day. Be, we'll be probably having a one-shot this, yes. this time next week. Something interesting will happen instead, uh, and then we'll continue Black Rock two weeks, so the week afterwards. Yeah. So hopefully, there's nothing. Not too huge a cliffhanger at the end of this that you guys yeah. are doing. To yeah. That. And, but, and that music writer said, Frosty World Building. Dude, I'm always, like, I haven't, like, straight up played in a game in <laughs> a long time besides this one. Yeah. And Strahd. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always world building because I'm always GMing. Always. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. If oh. I role play, it's because I'm GMing. You also right. have a couple of unique circumstances, uh, given the fact right now you don't have your desktop computer, so mm -hmm. your options are melt your brain with television and, you know, bullshit, or write and invent, which is what you've opted for, Yeah, so, yeah which is I, awesome. I, yeah, which I do it at work, too. Like, if <sighs> there's ever, like, a slow period, I'll, like, get a little pad and write down, because I remember, like, the values of stuff now, right? Because I've been yeah. doing it for so long. yeah. Because I remember all the guns for all flesh, so I can just Jesus be like, oh, this, this is the combat, this is the whatever. Like, I just write down all this shit. Yeah, yeah. I do a similar yeah. thing at work. Because yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. it's dead time. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I think it's a labor of love, though. Yeah. Completely. I'd love to. 
All right. So, time to stop the music and switch the mood. Ref. The air here is cold. You know for a fact you passed out. Something you saw a blur of motion and something impacted your side. You heard the crunch and cracking of your own bone. But this world isn't just black. You haven't just been <clears throat> thrown into a dark place. Instead, you're still where you stood when you got hit. In a version of the world that is the same as yours, but seems to be per held in this sort of permanent ethereal twilight around you. This sort of glimmering bluish purple hues that hang around the sky like dark storm clouds and you feel as if your entire body is incredibly cold and wet it's the sort of cold around you that sort of stings as if there's a pressure that's pushing on you crushing uh crushing your flesh in on you and you look around around you seems to be this endless icy tundra the same one that you left all around in every direction with these grey drifting flakes like dark snow falling from above like ash. <laughs> the land around you is barren and empty and there's an eerie silence that kind of echoes through the, sa the space and you just hear this drifting voice from one direction. My ref. And you know it's the voice of your mother. One that you wouldn't forget, no matter how many years it's been. Mother. You... Yeah, you look around, mm -hmm. calling back. Yeah. And the first thing that sort of pierces the darkness are her eyes. They aren't piercing with judgment or sort of inspecting, but just the sort of concern that only a mother can ever really have for her child. What's happened to you? You've grown. And she steps forwards slightly out of this sort of ethereal fog that hangs about the air. And we see this form of this tired woman sort of stepping forwards. Um, her form looks aged as you remember her. Extremely thin and gaunt from the lack of food and starvation that she suffered through. Her face isn't super wrinkled with age, but has the sort of smile lines that indicate um, sort of years of wear and stress um, that sort of like are plaguing her face. Ref, where are we? Well, were you, were you dead enough? I'm dead. What? And we cut into another scene as a rock slams into the ground. And this huge boulder slamming into the ground, throwing up snow. We see the spray fire forwards as we see Daiki dash sideways diagonally. The icy lake visible not far in the distance. Bertram head keeping low, shielding him from the elements and keeping his air resistance up as Daiki charges forwards at a breakneck pace. There's not too much difference from behind as we see this... These incredibly heavy footsteps following... STUPID BIRD! We see this giant form charging forwards as Bertram like glances back. Um, we see this just the silhouette of it in the fog charging forwards. Um, Bertram, can you roll me an animal handling check? Yeah. And this is just because Daiki isn't, isn't your bird, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta see if she's gonna be a good girl. <sighs> One second, my character sheet is loading very slow. Here we go. That's cool. Animal handling. Do I have inspiration, by the way? Because it's the start of the session, uh, or no? Yes, you'll have inspiration. Nice. So that basically means that you'll be able to give Daiki like simple directions. If you failed nice. that, it would just be Daiki running away with this thing of its own accord. Cool. So yeah, your head's down. Uh, is there anything particular you want to do? Um. So there is something. How far away is he from me? Uh, right now, he's maybe 50 feet back, uh, but you are gaining little by little, like, tiny increments of space. Seems okay. like you're very slightly quicker than it. All right. Uh, okay, so it is in range. Um, I... The thing is, though, I don't know if bolas work on large creatures. Uh, yours probably would, because you are, like, 
part of your job and the, when you bought these would have been specifically for something like this, right? Because yeah. when you went back to restock and bought this, you knew the type of thing you were looking to use it on. So Okay, so because because Daiki is responding appropriately to my commands, uh, Bertram is going to do something that he normally does, huck, which a lot of people don't see. So I'm going to turn around on the saddle, holding my mm -hmm. left hand onto that little nub part that's on the front. And yeah. uh, I'm going to grab the bola from my uh, saddle bag, and I'm just going to start spinning it, trying to get a good shot. Okay. And roll me an attack. Yeah, as you let it loose into the air, we see the bola fly directly into the camera, and we cut again to a pile of snow where there's these sort of quiet moments that last in the area where we last saw the blackfish lay slain. Out of the this sort of pile of snow um, shoots a head as we see Farnby's head just sticking at the neck out of the snow, and he begins <laughs> dragging Ref's body uh, over to the unconscious form of Huck. Jaren, you also rise from your hiding place seeing the dead body of this beast pulling around it and Bertram nowhere in sight. Uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, does my familiar get one as well? Uh, you popped your familiar back into its pocket dimension. I thought it was in the tree. Uh, oh yeah, you chose not to pop it back into the pocket dimension. You left it in the tree. Yeah, you can actually know just from the vantage point it's at. Just you make me a perception check. Okay. Yeah. Just because it's sort of like you climbing back onto your feet. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the DC. <laughs> Uh, you see there's a section of the lower torso area of this thing as it's lying dead on its side that's carved open, um, sort of where the stomach would be, where you see your brother made a deep gouge with one of its blades, uh, and you see a glimmer of something that doesn't look like the normal flesh um, inside of it. And you see uh, Farnby is dragging Ref's body over to uh, Huck's unconscious form. I look over at Farnby. Can you get him on that by yourself for one second? I just need to go look at something. I think I can get... I think I can get her back up. I think she's okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting back to town. Everything will be fine. Yeah. And he goes over. Uh, let me just roll. Cool. Huck regains 10 hit points. Nice. So Huck's, Huck's sort of breathing that seems like quite shallow seems to slowly start to soothe as, as he starts stroking the back of the head. It's like, there they go. You're right. You're cool. right. Yeah, and I walk over to look at whatever seems to be out of place. Okay. Um, roll me just an investigation check. Because you just sort of a glimmer of it as it like reflected the light as you were getting up. So as you go over to the body. Nice, yeah. Good so, work. as you as you go over, um, you see this sort of like rip in its stomach, and um, you sort of get. Do you you have a staff, right, or do you not? I have like a quarter staff, staff, right? Yeah, I have a quarter staff. Yeah, so you get your quarter staff and like use that to pry part of its stomach, like the sort of upper section of the uh, incision, up open and up, dragging it open a bit so you can get a better look inside. And you see inside there appears to be this glass. Um, circular thing. You can't tell its exact shape inside of this thing's stomach. Can I reach in and grab it? Yep. You reach in and grab it. You're holding it now. It's sort of soaked in this red blood, but you can see it's very visibly in the shape of a brain. Yeah, I pull it back out. Yeah, it's very like gem-like as well on the inside. There's sort of like the mist that only gems have. And you see Hark is now on her feet. Jared. Bertram's Bertram's doing this for us. We can't lose this window. We have to go. You see, he's like pulling Ref's yeah. body over yeah, the top. I, like I just stow it away for later. Um, mm -hmm. And right. Well, once his ability to not die in the face of all the odds is working for him, he'll be fine, I'm sure. But let's get back. Yeah, that should be our priority now. He's given us this. He nods and gets on the bird and you guys rush off. And Bertram, um, your bolos will hit the thing. 
Um, yes, yeah, so I was gonna say. I think it's. I think uh, Eton's AC is low. So. <sighs> <laughs> yes. So they impact with one of its legs, tangling it up, not against its other leg, but up against a uh, up against a tree uh, nearby as it's running past, and its leg gets stuck. It's like, um, does it need to make a save, or is it just like it gets grappled? Uh, it does. Ebola, I believe, is a twelve. Let me see. On a strength. Or... Uh, it well, I well for for it, I think you could make a strength, but typically it would be a um, typically it would be a dex, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'll it's make a dex. Just... I'll make a, I'll make a dex for the first round, and then when it like gets, if it gets knocked over, it'll be a strength to like tear its foot loose. Mm -hmm. uh, after pro for consecutive rounds, that seems decent. So fails. Yeah. So yeah, as this bowler hits it and hits into the tree, it just <clears throat> as you hear the sound of this thing behind you slamming into the snow. You look back over your shoulder <laughs> as you continue rushing off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be like pulling at it. It's like, no, it's fucking getting away, you idiot! <laughs> it's like pulling at its leg. Uh, while I'm while I'm running away, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay looking at it. You know, just whatever. I'm gonna pull the wine skin from my side and just start drinking while I'm. <laughs> yeah, while I'm you're well sort of like you're, yeah, you're like going backwards on it. So you're just like looking backwards, drinking as mm -hmm. it's uh, nice, and you begin streaming off. Um. So it's going to make a check to see if you are, since it has a decent range on this. It's going to make a strength check. Doesn't beat it. Okay, so yeah, you will be well out of range by the time it'd be able to make a, uh, yeah. a range attack on you. So you just All is, dude. Which is head off. We see this like trail of snow firing up from the back of Daiki as Daiki runs. And everyone will be safe. That's so good. So, we observe as uh, under the sort of midday sun streaming through the gaps in the very overcast clouds, um, we see Jaren and Farnby riding Huck, um, sort of ref's body tied to the back uh, across Huck's butt by like a large piece of rope. And you guys are almost at the town of Fetch, which you see approaching in the distance. Hi, <sighs> Bertrand's all right. I don't... I don't know what... It'll be fine. I need a scene, yeah. I can't be here alone. I'd be breaking Sleep Warden business. Please tell me you're not worried about breaking Sleep Warden business after what just happened. I mean, a little. But it looks back over his shoulder at you. But yeah, you guys pull up to the, the gate and you will be let back through. Um, by the captain of the guard. And where where is your intention to go, Jaren? Um, God. Uh, at this point? I don't know of anything, anyone in town I could go to for aid, do I? Um, so, temple, you haven't heard of anybody getting healed at the temple, but it is a temple. Um, and then the only place you know of anybody actually getting healed at is Fellharth. <laughs> but you don't know specifically about Resurrection. So. At, at any rate, you'd want to get them embalmed, probably, right? So... Well, um... Probably just... That, that's not where my head's at right now. Mm -hmm. Um... No, but, uh, Fettelharth was the place that, like, when I visited to drop off, um, that one guy, things mm -hmm. were, like actually kind of weird there uh she didn't let you in no yeah. not just that but like you said the inside was abnormally warm and she had some sort of weird yes the inside the inside was abnormally warm and she had like a sh uh sort of shriveled head on her neck yeah <clears throat> anything's worth a shot just... what come I mean, okay. Which direction? It's like I holding just, the reins. Yeah, I start just walking in front of the bird. Okay, cool. You'll lead him over to Fettelhoff? Yeah. Okay. Uh, at this point, as you guys start strafing off to the left, uh, Bertram, you will arrive back at the gate since Huck is slower carrying more bodies than um, Daiki is. Uh, it's me. Just like wave to 
Yasmond. Yeah. Uh, the gate will slowly open. Just a crack to let you through. Yeah, I'll squeeze through with the bird. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the wine skin is very obviously empty. It's now hanging loosely at my side, like upside down, just sort of the cork, like, you know, hitting all over the place. Yeah. You'll see over to the left just the distant last um, bit of Huck uh, as, like, her tail feathers as they go around a corner off to the left. Yeah. Come on, girl. This way. Mm -hmm. And start and going over towards him. Cool. You lead Daiki to follow. And by the time you guys reach Federal Hearth, Bertram will have caught up with you guys. Yeah, I'll just go up behind them. I won't, like, announce myself. I'll wait till somebody notices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is by the time we're at Federal Hearth? It's like, it's like, yeah, you're, you're basically, you will have just get got to the, um, um, the actual building itself, as you notice, Bertram, probably. I see you're not dead. And I just go to the door. Yeah, okay. look at him, and he, when he says dead, I just look over at Ref. And I'm going to go over and confirm my suspicion, because I only saw him go down, right? So yep. I go over and just uh, check his pulse. Yeah, you check his pulse, and there isn't one his body isn't warm but it's not yet cold either it's kind of like slightly warmer than the air around it um it's probably pallid you notice, yeah you notice that um refs like deep wounds actually you can see bone uh on the on the sections of his arm where like muscle has just been torn away yeah he i just stare at the body for like a minute as you're staring, you just hear, as I'm assuming Jaren is like knocking at the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, there'll be uh, a one moment called from inside. Kind of the doors. The, so you're just staring into the ground until the door opens. Yeah. The door uh, like creaks open and a head sticks around the end. Is there anything? Oh. I need your help. Is he. Can is he you all help right? It? No. Okay, bring him in. All right. She like opens the door. Yeah, I go to take the uh, take his body off of Huck and bring mm -hmm. him. You're to... blasted with warmth, like leaving an airport on like a way hotter, way colder country almost. Like there's just sort of the impact of the sun change in temperature. This is Brenna, yes. As the door opens, yeah, Brenna. Um, okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. There we go. Thanks. But yeah, uh, she she'll just like walk inside. Right, okay. Uh, Farmby sort of like gets the legs of uh, Ref. Mm. What do we put? Just bring him in. I need to look at him before. I know how serious this is. Yeah, I just follow her directions. Yeah. Uh, as you walk inside. This is the first time, I think... Yeah, it's the first time any of you have seen the inside, the actual full inside of uh, Fettel Hearth, so i give it a bit of a description first. Um, this place is more reminiscent of a tavern than a temple. Um, the walls are sort of lined with these wooden supporting beams that curve upwards uh, towards the roof. Um, near the entrance, there are uh, curtains separating one straw bed from another with two rows of three, so six beds. Um, where there are various forms lying in them. Uh, some cupboards and shelves line the walls containing some containing more mundane things like herbs or um, some parts of animals, some salves looking, uh, and some contain some different things like actual animal eyes, goblin fingers, that sort of thing. Um, some cupboards around the room also have large uh, metallic locks placed on them, and the entire place is incredibly dark as if there's no natural light or source of heat. Uh, as Brenna walks in, she waves. She looks back at you and waves a hand upwards. Uh, and the chandelier, this rough, rusted iron thing hanging on thick iron chains, um, seems to illuminate of its own accord. Um, you see around the place, this place doesn't necessarily look like a place of healing in the conventional sense, but more almost like a war room with nurses tending to injured from battle. 
Um, lying on one bed, there is a woman in thick bandages that wrap around one arm. She seems to be dreaming some harsh nightmare. She's sort of sweating profusely and rolling in her sleep uncomfortably. Um, you see another man with an incredibly grotesque leg. I actually have an image of this uh, somewhere. Uh, yes, with an incredibly like grotesque leg and this sort of black blackness coating his arms as if they'd been covered in coal dust. Um, he sort of strains his head, almost painfully like tilting it while lying down to try and get a look at you as you walk past. Um, come on, as Brenna urges you towards uh, one of the three back doors at the back of the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you and uh, Farnby carry ref uh, over to that room. And this room looks more comfortable, more like a room at an inn than a hospital, like the other places look. Um, except there appears to be at the side this sort of wooden trolley uh, with the wheels uh, and a few spa spare chairs littered around so people can sort of talk to whoever the bedridden person is. Uh, please, lay him here. I'll give you all ten minutes. I need to go fetch some materials. Uh, I would still be outside, by the way. Okay, cool. In the snow. Barnby will have, like, walked inside and is sort of, like, looking about like he doesn't know what to do. And, like, when she walks past, she's like... It's fine, you can stay or go see your friend. Right. Right, yeah. And he just walks outside to you, Bertram. Like a like a uh, lost dog. Yeah. And you see um, Bertram, this woman, Brenna Erlen, uh, pull up sort of a hood over her head, pull up her scarf over her mouth, and just set off in a direction towards the town. And Jaren, I think you're alone in the room with Ref's body just laying across this bed. Yeah. Um... Probably after, like, as soon as she left and closed the door, uh, just simply put, Jaren's a mess. Like, he's probably got both of his hands and, like, just the top of his uh, face just kind of laying on his brother's chest. Mm -hmm. Just. Yeah. <laughs> and just sort of not feeling any warmth from the body or anything. Yeah. And where you, like, where even Jaren would probably expect to, like, start crying, it's just he's finding an emptiness inside of him. Yeah. And after a while of this, um, she, we see her start rushing back, this sort of small pouch in her hands, and Bertram, are you and Fonby still outside, or have you headed off at this point? Uh, I, I mean, I, I would still be standing outside until I can talk to him, and then, okay, you know, yeah. Yeah. So she'll like brush past you and just sort of give you a nod as she heads in. Um, you're more than welcome inside. No. It's no use. She nods and moves in. Um, and Jaren, you hear a creak of the door as she sort of like peeks her head round and heads in, holding a pouch in her hands. Um, she puts a stopper at the bottom of the door and puts the pouch on the trolley and goes out to go start collecting various other ingredients. You see her bring in a large jar containing a heart that's maybe the size of a brain, um, which is inexplicably still beating um, while suspended in this sort of pinkish fluid. Uh, she also brings in a vial with a metal of some kind that looks less like iron. Its sheen seems to remind you more of uh, like a fish's scales in its sort of uh, texture and reflectivity. Uh, she also pulls um, the a jar containing what look like human teeth, uh, a sack of crushed dried berries, and uh, a ah that's uh, and some twine and a bowl. <laughs> I was just checking all of the ingredients for the uh, what needs to be done, uh, and she sits down. Are you sure you want to be here for this? It's yeah. not a good sight. I'll be... I'm staying. I, I won't require any pay for this, but you can't tell any of the other townsfolk. I won't say a word. She blinks at you for a couple moments, like trying to gauge you, and then nods. She takes the heart uh, and pu puts it in the bowl and begins the process. You see the large, um, what's it called, the vena cava, the sort of um, the vein that comes out of, I think it's the ventricle, 
um, no, they come out the. It doesn't matter. The, <laughs> one of the large uh, tubes that come out of the heart uh, that's been sewn up with a section of twine. She begins undoing, uh, removing this twine from the entrance. And you see, as soon as it does, as she starts interacting with this in any way, the large heart starts beating faster as if whatever it is is panicking somehow um blood starts to slowly leak out of the aorta that she's unsewn uh, and she places the uh metal uncorking this vial placing the metal into it pushing it deep into this tube as if plugging a hole um she takes the bowl removes the heart from it and begins crushing um the teeth into it down into dust meticulously over maybe five minutes or so um, she takes her time in mixing these sort of berries, crushing them until she has this sort of strange paste with the teeth. Um, she begins to undo uh, a vein coming out of the sort of right ventricle uh, and starts shoving this sort of strange paste into the valve with her thumb. Her hands are now sort of coated with blood from this strange thing. And she then extends a finger all the way where she placed the metal and pushes it all the way in. Uh, into the heart before taking the twine and re-stitching the holes. She... Um... One second. Okay. Um, she takes the heart in both her hands and begins to chant a few words, eyes closed. Her sort of visage growing uh, slightly darker as if being encompassed in shadow. As if the light around her is being sucked towards her. Um, but then you notice sort of the head on her chest starts to glow very faintly as if just a candle is being lit from within. Um... Her chant is ethereal, which almost is calming in a very converse way to the sort of harsh gore of her ritual. Her words seem to soothe you as the heart's beat also seems to relax. Until its beat only occurs once every few moments instead of the rapid that it was having earlier. She holds the heart above her head and starts to tip it, and excess blood starts to flow down over her face, washing over her from this uh, heart. And she turns back towards you, covered in blood, and wipes her mouth with, with the back of her hand. Her face is stained red, but her eyes sort of peer at you from underneath with these whites, uh, white eyes rimmed by the blood, uh, with a sort of underneath this serious seriousness to her. I would recommend leaving now. This is where it gets a bit more... And sightly. You can stay if you want, but... Go on. I can... You'll do nothing to interfere. If you are telling me that this is going to help my brother, then no, I will interfere. It may not help him, but he'll be back. What do you mean? People who I bring back aren't always completely the same. Slightly more angry, slightly perturbed. I don't do it for most. Well, then I Are you stick sure this it. is something you want to make? I better stick around to make sure that when he comes back, he comes back him. Mm -hmm. Then don't interfere. Hmm. And she sort of like nods at you understandingly and puts a hand underneath Ref's head and the pillow, staining the white with blood, tilting him up slightly, almost as if a mother would for a child. For that one moment, this woman looks the most like she's looked like an actual nurse, uh, tending to the weak, or she would if not covered in, you know, blood. The blood. <laughs> uh, she lifts Ref slightly more until he's almost in a sitting position, sort of shifting him up, so he's leaning against the backboard of the bed. She places a hand onto his chest and starts to mutter a few words, chanting once more. And her hand becomes wreathed in flame that doesn't seem to burn Ref, but his body and chest begin to glow slightly before darkening back down. Extremely slowly, Ref's eyes open, revealing not his eyes. His eyes have the harsh blue glow of undeath. Which you recognize, Jaren. Mm. 
she extends a hand forwards. Your tongue. To Ref's body, and Ref's mouth opens with this unnatural click, as if commanded. As if his very mouth is like being forced open against the tension of his muscles from rigor mortis. Mm. As his tongue extends outwards, Brenna grabs the pouch from her side and tilts Ref's head up, dumping this uh, grayish black powder over the tongue and into the mouth. She begins to sort of work it around the inside of his gums and inside his mouth until all of the red and pink inside of his mouth is blackened or dark gray with this sort of strange powder that she has. She then picks up the heart from the trolley, putting Ref's head back down as his head clicks back into place eat this and holds the heart this large heart forwards ref's form extends its hands again this horrible clicking noise as his bones sort of ache against the strain like a blind man feeling towards something they're about to be handed she places this large heart in both hands and places a hand on his back sort of comfortingly and leads forward as she watches intensely focusing on his actions as this undead form of ref begins to lean forward, his mouth extending it unnaturally wide, clamping down and tearing out a large section of the heart before swallowing. This continues on and on for a few more minutes, the blood mingling with the grey dust in his mouth, washing it down and flowing down his mouth and chest. Ref. Hey. <clears throat> Your mother sort of beckons you towards her. Where? We're dead. We're dead. She just opens her arms sort of wide for like a hug from you. Tears starting to run down her face. Yeah. But we're together. <gasps> yeah, I, don't know. I just sort of almost fall apart and just lose any pretense of maturity. And yeah, I just fall into her arms. Yeah. As soon as you hug her, the sort of grayish dust starts to grow slightly more black and fall down from the sky above, increasing at a faster rate, but you don't even notice, just no. intensely focused on hugging your mother. Mm -hmm. And she, she like, pulls back, pulls away slightly from you and put, places her hand on your cheek very gently, uh, running her sort of fingers along the cracked skin and scars that stretch along your face. What's happened to you? I got in a fight that I couldn't win. Uh, you always were getting into fights. Yeah, I suppose. If you're all grown up, is your brother back? Is he here? Well, he's, he's not here. Uh, he... Must, must have, must be alive. Ref. He'll be I fine. Don't. He's smarter and more clever than I'll ever be. I think it's for the best that but he's ref, not made. My ref, like, hug you <clears throat> tighter. Yeah, yeah, just sort of silencing And very, me. very close towards your ear. Yeah. Your strength was always your kindness. I don't remember much, but the visions of you looking after me, I don't know how long it was. Before I must have. I'm so happy. Thank you. And you sort of like raise one of your hands, to like touch yeah. her face, like wipe away the tears. And the second your hand touches her face, a crack starts to appear across it, oh. running across her features. Mm -hmm. as her face grows worried and her face starts to turn to ash revealing the flesh underneath and then the flesh turns to ash revealing the bone and then the bone turns to ash as your hug sort of like goes into this sort of grey mist oh. that your mother has turned into mm -hmm. you look around and the wind begins to echo you start hearing voices echoing all around as this wind starts circulating this horrible laughter echoing in your mind again as you hear, come mix and meld. A father passes his blade to his heir. A mother passes her wisdom to her child. And so, you will pass your time for your son. Give him your stolen years. And, Breath, you open your eyes. And 
you're very weary you're tired you feel the weight of your mortal form you feel exhausted almost three points exhausted as you look down at your hands and see them coated in blood your stomach with these deep gouge marks still unhealed across it and you look you can see down on one of your arms the bone your own bone exposed through these deep gashes in one side and you sort of look up and see your brother sitting on a chair at the side of the room and to the left of you Brenna Earl and one hand on your back sort of like smiling slightly are you all right what is do Why? you know your name? <coughs> I... I'm Rev. <sighs> she like looks over at you, Jaren. Well, he has that at least. He knows himself. Do you want to do anything right now? Yeah, as soon as she like Rev or Jaren's just been waiting for the okay to like go approach because he didn't know when it would be not interfering. Um and yeah, he rushes over. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you, um You remember everything. You know what happened to you. Remember me, brother. Brother. I'll leave you to a moment. She like takes the trolley and starts wheeling it out of the room. Do you have a mm. healer? Anyone that can see to his wounds, I say as she's about to leave. I have some salves. I don't have any healing magic of my own. I'll the grab some salves. Right. She wheels the trolley out of the room. I thought you would be dead. A lot I was dead. This. I know you were. Ref. Yeah. Roll me a charisma save, please. My favorite. <laughs> okay. Roll me a d4. Okay. I know what this is. Your sanity goes down by four. Awesome. All right. So, what you're at saying? seven. Uh, oh, you're keeping track of it? Okay, good. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I. Perfect. Perfect. That's that's because of the what you saw happen to your mother in front of you. No, that makes perfect sense. I love it. It, it actually works very well. Yep. I remember everything. Can't you say that's all good, but it's good that your mind is still here. Don't move too much. Your body needs to be healed before that. Why did you leave? What do you mean? I seem to have this strange, like, micro-seizure as I just sort of, like, my eyes roll back for a split second and I just... Bertram. He's outside. He didn't want to come in. Well, he should. We have work to do. What are you talking about? Slump back a little bit. I need you to speak to me. Then shut up and listen. We, I presume, killed that thing. I? That's not the end of this. We know that. Uh, but now I understand what it is to know, unlike I ever could before. Ruff starts so breathing got... deeply with his eyes closed. Regardless of what you know or what we need to do, you need to be healed before we do anything. All in due time, brother. No. No, I'm going to get it done as quickly as possible. 
And what are you waiting for? Calm yourself and rest. I'll be back. Mm. Yeah, and I leave. As you get to the door, like, Brenna comes past you holding two small vials of salves um, and heads over to the bed and she'll be applying them to you, Ref. Uh, one of them is sort of this, uh, the one that will probably be applied first is this sort of blood uh, congealing salve that she's mm. going to apply to your wounds to stop the blood flow. Um, but yes, you are going to head outside, Jaren. Mm. When you get to the door, you see Bertram is not there. And as you like look around, you start hearing the sound of footsteps that you recognize as axe beak footsteps as Farnby is sort of like rushing back with a worried look on his face. Jaren! Jaren! Like swings off of Daiki mid movement. I can stop him. Jaren, please. What's just... happening? Is Ref okay? Yes, uh, I think. He's alive. Oh, well, you'll need to tell Bertram that. Where is he? The tavern. Mm. Just like the knowledge of what's happening. Yeah, I'll go to the tavern. Okay. Yeah, you sort of like <laughs> rush over. Um, if you want, just for speed, um, Farnby will like get you up on Daiki just yeah. to get there quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're both right over, and um, and um, Farnby will like pull uh, Daiki up. You'll jump off the side, get over to the doors, and swing them open, and. Bertram, do you want to describe what they see? Um, there would be uh, where Bertram is normally sitting, where you know he has his like his worn down area where he's sitting. There would be a bunch of knocked over glasses. Uh, there would be probably around maybe two guys that are knocked out. There was blood on the floor, and uh, Bertram would be. Uh, would be uh, kind of backed up against a wall with his fists up and he'd have blood running down his head and on his knuckles and uh, there'd be a large whoever's left essentially with the tavern owner trying to like fuck you know get Bertram out essentially yeah yeah there are these two there are these two dwarves in front of Bertram one of them seems to be holding a hand axe in one hand you see Bertram has been disarmed through the process of getting these other guys out and Solveig seems to be holding his hand up trying to be like Bertram, I told you to get out of my fucking tavern before I do something f truly fucking foolish to a sleep warden. He's like holding one hand towards, uh, sort of stout tail, one hand towards you. <sighs> do it. For something. Yeah, I just start like making my pace uh, in the middle of all these people. Yeah, you like step over an unconscious body. Sovig's head whips around. Now is not a good time, Jaren. It's never a good time, Solvig. Give me a minute. Uh, you say, uh, he, Solvig says Jaren, and I would look up at Jaren, and uh, I'm going to run over to Jaren. I'm going to try and tackle you to the ground, dude. Just right. this complete blank, like, just rage over, and, like, the drunkenness has, has seemingly left. Like, it's mm. like it's this whole much, experience It's as much like, as like, a tackle. It's as much of a tackle as a trip. Like, mm -hmm. you sort of, like, trip and tackle him in one motion. So, uh, if you want to run me in athletics, Bertram. And Jaren, uh, athletics or acrobatics in response. Sure. Uh... Nice. So, Bertram, you try and move out of the way, Jaren, or, like, hold your ground. And Bertram, just with his surprising weight in his armor and just force of moving forwards, he just grabs you around the waist and brings you to the ground. I told you to leave. And uh, I want to try and punch him in the face. Okay, roll me an attack. Uh, sorry, I should have just rolled straight, uh, straight strength. So that it's with hit. your proficiency. But mm. yeah, I don't think that will hit. Jaren, your AC is better than 11, right? No, but is he proficient in unarmed attack? Yeah, every everyone is by base D and D. Everyone's uh, good at fist. Okay. In in the first version of the PHB, they actually had it as like a weapon that everyone was proficient in. But okay, then they nice. the PHB. Yeah. So I have it as everybody's always proficient in fists because you're an adventurer. No, that hits. Yep. Yeah. So just go up and just punch you, and uh, I'll let him do something before I go to punch him again. Just because yep. Bertram's lost it at this point. 
Yeah, Jaren is almost just like he's emotionally exhausted to the point where he just doesn't have much in terms of emotion left to give. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he just takes the hit and just kind of turns back to look at you. <sighs> Live. If you stuck around, you'd know. Yeah, and I gotta I gotta punch again. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, and you miss again. So just in your drunken sort of fury, you're just like hitting, not even like looking where you're punching. You just know where his head is supposed to be. And Jaren is just like move, move to one side, slightly rolled the other way, and is managing to just slightly fight uh, fight you off as your fists are like lazily hitting the ground, your knuckles bloodied as you pull them back up. Yeah. Roll me a perception check with disadvantage you, Bertram, and normal perception check for you, um, Ref. Uh, not Ref, Jaren. Mm -hmm. The sorry. other one. Okay. Bro, okay. uh, perception, sorry? Yeah, with disadvantage. Okay, that one. So yeah, um, Jaren, your head, as you as you move to one side and roll, your head turns towards the door, and you see the doors moving open as you hear Fondry's voice. No, no, please, you have to get some rest. As you see uh, Ref very uh, lazily, like, and exhaustedly, like, well, hanging on the door. Can I, can I actually sort of describe myself a little bit and may, yeah. maybe take some artistic liberty here? Um, yeah, feel free. Is it, what time of day is it right now? Is it like morning, afternoon-ish? Uh, or... It's afternoon-ish. Okay, cool. Yeah. So as I sort yeah, of mid, open the door, to early afternoon. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm probably like, because my, my armor and clothing was pretty much ripped to, a, to shreds. I'm probably just covered in like what amounts to a sheet, basically, uh, yeah. as I come in the door. And you might have thought, well, maybe a, a incredibly, you know, fatal injury like this might look scary, but it just looks disgusting. The fact that I have control of an arm that is mutilated beyond recognition as an arm is just horrifying. But but not in the sense of it's scary. It's just, oh my god. That's disgusting. The yeah. Wounds, the wounds all look purple as well because of the salve that's applied. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It almost, like, it It might even look like it's festering, but it's not necessarily yet. Uh, my yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Says, um... Solveig. And I think because Bertram doesn't notice as Jaren's like head is tilted, mm -hmm. you will get another you'll like try and bring your fist down to punch him. Yeah, by the way, because he's uh technically prone, does that do anything for me hitting him? Uh, I gave you well. him yeah, I gave you him prone for free, and you also you're kind of prone as you're pinning him with your knees. So it'll just be a normal roll. Oh, okay, because I was gonna say I knocked him over, right? So Yeah, yeah. Uh Jaren, does that hit? Yeah. Okay, cool. So roll me... Actually, your strength is a one or a two? One. Okay, so you take two damage as he just, like, clocks you in the side of the uh, face as your head's turned towards your brother, Jaren. Yeah, and unless somebody's going to do something else, I'm just going to keep punching him until something happens because I'm not looking. Yeah, the only yeah, thing the I'll other say... Two is, an action. The, only two, the only thing I'll say um, as far as that goes is if I can to the other two... Better me than you. If you want two dead orc boys, then keep punching. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, Solveig uh, is going to come over and try and grab you by the arms. Okay. Um, so he's not super strong. But roll me an athletics or acrobatics. And he'll roll an 11. Yeah. To try and grab you he by the arms. He got a 23. Arms. Jesus. Yeah, what Bertram. A lucky boy. No, uh, did, did he? Bertram got a 23 oh, yeah, on his got... athletics, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. He's like, just leave the boy alone, Bertram. Come to your senses. Fuck off. The other guys, <laughs> yeah, the other guy's coming towards you with a hand axe. Uh, and you try and bring another fist down, breaking free from Solveig's grasp. Uh, and Jaren, how, how do you avoid this? Jaren's like not trying to dodge. Jaren's not even trying to dodge. If he misses, it's just because he's drunk enough to not hit a stationary target. Nice. Cool. And Ref, is there anything you're doing? I would like to be very slowly walking up to the side of Bertram, not necessarily trying to get his attention, but when I get up to him, I want to lay my mutilated hand on his shoulder. Yeah, okay. So I think Bertram will get one more hit yeah. in, and then that will happen. So. Yeah. Nice. That hit again, so two more bludgeoning to you, Jaren. Mm -hmm. Are you still up? I don't know how much health you're on. I think, you're on, I think you didn't take any damage, right? That is correct good um 
see another whack lands in your face, not with the same sort of force that you would imagine uh, Bertram to have uh, been able to deliver. It seems like the drink is wearing him down. As um, Bertram, you feel this cold, wet hand grab on you as this sort of like wet liquid starts dripping onto your actual fruit past your armor onto your actual like clothes underneath yeah um you know just so, it, like lift lift the fist up again and just you know looking and then it's and I'm looking down at you boy what's happened to you the salt eggs, like looking at your body. Nothing really. Just discovered a new perspective. What? Not a new perspective? Are you fucking mad? Solveig. <sighs> God. The other dwarf is kind of like t stumbling back, like <sighs> just taking a couple steps back. Mm hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna look down at, at Bertram and just. I've returned. Yeah, I'll just like put my foot, my fist down, and just get off of Jaren. I'm not going to offer him a hand up, but I'm just going to like look at Ref one more time, and I'm just gonna walk past Jaren and out the uh, out the tavern door. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah uh, as uh, as Bertram leaves, um, I'll I'll track him with my head, but I will offer Jaren my good arm. Oh, I mean, I would have started standing up as soon as he got up, but I'd take it. Yeah, uh, just to help you the last bit up. Yeah, you like pull yourself up so you're at a sitting position, and then you like look to see Ref's hand in front of your face. You grab it in a fireman's grip, and he pulls you up. Do you? You need any bandages? Have you gone to Fettle Hearth? I uh, just came. Right. I don't understand, right. but this Let's might be go. a weird question for you. Are you... Do you need healing? I don't even know anymore. Need is a strong word. I could Would you use it, from... certainly. Good. Then let's go to the priest. But I feel like Bertram could use us more. Yes, I thought he could too, until he started beating me to a pulp. Come on. He's not so bad. <laughs> and I'll just sort of brush the side of your shoulder with... I think this is sort of the first time I'm trying to do anything precise with my mutilated hand. I try to brush your shoulder, and instead I just kind of like almost rub it against your shirt as I can't, like, pull it up high enough. I'll have to get used to it. We'll get that looked at. It's nothing. Funny. As I begin to walk out, it's funny. Not a day ago, you said he never hit any of us. And I just leave. I'm just smiling behind you. I don't know if you'd see it. But, yeah, we leave. We just get this shot of like Ref sort of smiling as he like looks down. Yeah. <laughs> looks back up. Hmm. And that's where we're gonna take our break. Alright. Nice. Yeah.